This AP free response problem deals with using Faraday's law to calculate the voltage induced in a loop of wire where there's a changing magnetic field. So in this problem, we have a magnetic field that's coming out of the page. And it exists in a region of space defined by a circle of radius 0.6 meters. So that's this radius right here. The magnetic field is perpendicular to the page and it's increasing out of the page at a rate of 0.4 teslas per second. A single loop of wire with negligible resistance and radius of 0.9 meters is connected to the light bulb with a resistance of 5 ohms and the assembly is placed concentrically around the region of magnetic field. So the first thing that's being asked for is the EMF that's induced in the loop. So Faraday's law gives us the magnitude of the induced EMF. The magnitude of this induced voltage is the magnitude of the rate of change of the magnetic flux with respect to time. Magnetic flux is magnetic field times area. If you have a non-constant magnetic field, you have to integrate the magnetic field over the area. But in this, we have a uniform magnetic field. So we can easily just write this as the constant magnetic field times the area. And so this is the rate of change of the magnetic field times the area. And the area that we're looking at is the area that the magnetic field exists in. So that's the circle of radius 0.6 meters. It's not looking at the radius of the wire that's 0.9 meters. There's a region where there's no magnetic field. It's only confined in the region that has a circle of radius 0.6 meters. And in this problem, the area is not changing. So the rate of change is just the area times dB dt, which is the rate that the magnetic field is changing at. That's the 0.4 teslas per second that we're given in the problem. So the area that we have is the area of the circular region that contains the magnetic field. The area of a circle is pi r squared. So this is pi times 0.6 squared. Again, the most common mistake would be to use the full 0.9 meters, but again, the magnetic field only exists out to the radius of 0.6 meters. So that's my area, and then dB dt is 0.4 teslas per second. So this was the area, and this was dB dt. And if I multiply that out, pi times 0.6 squared is 1.131 square meters times 0.4 teslas per second. It gives me the magnitude of the induced voltage that is 0.452 volts. So again, changing a magnetic field through a loop of wire generates a voltage in the wire. And we're going to see in the next part that that means that there's going to be a current that flows in the wire. So part B says, determine the magnitude of the current in the circuit, and then indicate the direction of the current at point O. So Ohm's law says that the current is the voltage divided by the resistance. But my voltage here is that induced EMF, that induced electromotive force, or the induced voltage of 0.452 volts, divided by the resistance. Again, the only thing that has resistance is the light bulb. So this is 0.452 volts. The resistance of the light bulb is 5 ohms. 
So we get a current of 0 0.0905 amps. The other thing that we're asked to look at is what direction the current is. And so we can get that from looking at Lenz's law. Lenz's law is a much more conceptual way of looking at it, but it says basically that nature doesn't like change. And so there's a certain flux through this loop. And Lenz's law says that the loop wants that flux to stay constant. And so if we're increasing that flux, so we have a magnetic field that's out of the page and getting stronger, there's an increasing outward magnetic field, so there's an increasing outward flux. Lenz's law says that a current will be induced in the loop that tries to cancel out that change in flux. Lenz's law says that the voltage that gets induced causes a current to flow, and that current tries to cancel out any change in magnetic flux. So since the magnetic field is out of the page and it's getting stronger, we want a current to flow in this loop that creates a magnetic field that is into the page. And so to do that, you point the thumb of your right hand in the direction of the current and you want to bend your fingers so that they point inward in the center of the loop. And So if I do that, if I'm at point O, the only way that I can do that is to have my thumb pointing down and the fingers of my right hand will curl around and point into the page. And so at point O, the current is going down. Again, this is showing that the current is clockwise. Again, Faraday's law actually says the same thing. It says that the induced voltage E equals negative the rate of change of the magnetic flux with respect to time. So that negative sign means that the voltage that gets induced opposes the change in magnetic flux. And so it generates a current that opposes that change in flux. And so it's the exact same idea. But it's just much easier to look at this, look at what direction the magnetic field is in, is that magnetic field getting bigger or stronger? Sometimes the magnetic field is staying constant and it's the area that's changing. But either way, you're looking at how does the flux change and what direction can the current be in to generate a magnetic field through the loop that cancels out that change in flux. Now, because there's some resistance here, once this current starts, if the magnetic field did not keep changing, the current would quickly drop down to zero. With this, because the magnetic field continues to change, we're going to continue to have a current that flows. Part C says, determine the total energy dissipated in the light bulb during a 15 second interval. So energy is power times time. Again, power is energy divided by time. So energy equals power times time. And so the power is the current times the voltage. So I could use the current that I calculated. I could find my induced EMF of 0.452 volts. Or it's the current squared times the resistance. So I'm going to use that version. So the current squared times the resistance is the power times the time of 15 seconds. So this is going to be 0 0.0905 amps squared times the resistance of 5 ohms times 15 seconds. And that gives me an energy dissipated of 0.6143 joules. Again, this is a very common thing to be asked if you know the power for a circuit, current times voltage, current squared times resistance, voltage squared divided by resistance. Somehow, if you have the equation for power, they will often not ask you for the power. They will often ask for the energy dissipated in a certain amount of time. And so that's going to be the power times the time. And the final part of this question is we now have the exact same situation, it's the exact same magnetic field, but now our loop has a radius of only 0.4 meters. 
The same light bulb was connected. The magnetic field is still increasing out of the page at a rate of 0.4 Teslas per second. We're not going to have any effects of the field on the light bulb itself. And it asks whether the brightness of the bulb is going to be greater, less than, or equal to the brightness before. Well, the key thing in this is that the brightness depends on the current. If the current is bigger, the, it's going to be brighter. If the current is smaller, it's going to be dimmer. So we need to look at how the current is going to change, if it's going to change. And to find the current, current was voltage divided by the resistance. So we need to look at how the induced EMF changes. Again, the induced EMF, the induced electromotive force, the induced voltage, the magnitude of that was the area times the rate of change of the magnetic field. This is the same. dBdt is still 0.4 Teslas per second. But the area is not 0.6 meters like we had before. It, it doesn't have a radius of 0.6 meters. It only has a radius of 0.4 meters. Our area is smaller. And so this means that our induced voltage is smaller. And since current is voltage divided by resistance, this means that the current is smaller. And if the current is smaller, it's going to be less bright. Again, this problem is a very straightforward example of using Lenz's law and Faraday's law, looking at induced voltages. This is difficult for some students just because it's a little bit more of an abstract idea, but this is a very common type of problem. These problems where the magnetic field is changing at a constant rate and using that rate that the magnetic field changes at to calculate an induced voltage and induced current, it's something that's extremely important in an introductory physics class.